welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is something a little bit different. It is a cabin crew Q and A. For those that do not know, I flew as cabin crew for BA for about a year. I applied when I was 18, I got the job when I was 19, and I flew until I was 20. So that's basically my life for cabin crew. My mum actually flew for cabin crew for 25 years, but I will get all into it in this Q&A. I did a little Q&A poll on my Insta, and if you do not follow me on Instagram, make sure to do so, because it's lit. No, but seriously, I did a Q&A and you guys came through so I've got the questions here and I'm going to go through and answer them. I feel like a bit of a niche subject this but I get so many questions about cabin crew and I think maybe this is the better way to do it. Just do a Q&A video on my YouTube just so I can redirect you guys to here if you ever want any answers for any of your questions. So first question is what interested you to do it? So what interested me to do it is that my mum actually flew for 25 years and she used to talk about it. Obviously she, well not obviously, but she flew for BA as well and she used to talk about it all the time and I used to be like oh my goodness that sounds amazing and um, so when I was younger I used to go on trips with her and I just remember thinking this is so glamorous obviously it had changed quite a bit since when my mum flew she was quite lucky to be worldwide like Gatwick she would have got paid more than me and also she would have had longer trips so she was living the dream but I still knew that it had changed and everything since but I still wanted to do it and that's why I chose BA as well so yeah that was the whole reason why I was into it when like you know when you're younger and you go around like circles with what you would be when you're older and like primary school I always just say cabin crew so that's why I did it next question how did you go about applying for the job and how old were you I was 19 and I went about and I just did it online I get so many questions asking how to like, like apply for the job and it's literally so easy I think you literally still online and everyone I knew just did it online so go on the website or whatever one you want to apply for and I think the instructions is quite simple if I can do it anyone can do it is there certain requirements height etc so yes there is i have no idea what it is but there is and i remember when i walked into my assessment day i had to reach up and i remember them measuring my height to work for a shareways your height must be between five foot two and six foot one due to the limit in aisle space size is important and your weight must be in proportion to your height do you need experience before no absolutely not i well i worked in a pub before and i think i just that you know that was my experience working with the general public and the pub was really nice and it was in ditchling so yeah i just basically bigged up the pub loads in my cv basically i don't think you need any actual experience of flying otherwise that would sort of be impossible for someone that's brand new yeah no no you don't need experience flying but you probably need like hospitality experience yeah did you need certain qualifications yes you did you needed your maths and english gcse i believe i think at least a c in both i know a couple of people on my course that didn't actually get that in GCSE English or maths and I think they actually got the job but be able helping them get that as part of the training process just to get something in it because yes you do need that but it's more like personality wise and I sort of before applying for the job I did a lot of research because I really really wanted to get the job and it was made quite clear in different things that I researched that it is definitely more personality you need to be really bubbly and chatty and basically good with the general public basically so although we do have small requirements or they do have small requirements like qualifications and stuff it's sort of like basic things it's nothing like you don't need a star a star a star even aa or bbb it's literally just c and maths and c in english how long did you wait from your online assessment to hear when your interview is so i think i literally just did this online assessment online for those of you who don't know you just go on the website and you do this online thing and about a week after i believe or a couple of weeks after i got a date for my assessment day which is when i went up to heathrow and i did this day where you meet everyone and god it's 
literally so brutal. It's like you walk in to this like headquarters and I feel like people are just staring at you and it's just so competitive. I got a lot of questions asking if it's like competitive and stuff. A hundred percent. I walked in, I was absolutely petrified because I was 18. That's so crazy. I was 18 when I walked in. I think I was youngest one on the assessment day. And it was like a mix between like Britain's Got Talent and like, I don't even know. People were um, going like halfway through the day. They split you up halfway through the day and one room was were told to go home and the other room were like, you've made the rest of the day. Like it was literally so brutal. And then you just, you just see these people walking past you and you'd be like, what are they doing? And they were just getting in their cars and driving home and you were just carrying on. It was like, it was like whoever makes it to the end of the day might get the job, but even then you don't know whether you're gonna get the job. It was literally so brutal, I can't even tell you. Um, what was the interview assessment day like? So yeah, it was it was really, really brutal. There was like scenarios I had to do. There was face-to-face -face questions with like one person. It was just like, I'm trying to think of like the day, cause it was quite a long time ago. It was like, I can't really remember, but there was just so many different things. Like I'd walk in and then you'd speak to one-to-one, -one, you do the, oh yeah, there was a group exercise where there was about six of you around a table and you had people in each corner working for BA doing the assessment like day. And they'd be like staring at you, seeing how you like cope with certain situations. And it was just like ridiculous. The whole day was a complete blur. Honestly, I was 18, I was petrified. I can't believe I even got the job. And that just goes to show like with the group exercise, I didn't 100% know what the hell was going on. But I think because I was quite bubbly and quite confident back then as well. I think that really pushed me to get the job. It was sad seeing some of them obviously not get the job, but it was also really exciting getting my training day start and the people, some people from my assessment day were there and it was just, yeah, but there wasn't many from the assessment day. There must've been like 30 people at my assessment day and I reckon there was like four of four maybe on the training day that got the job, which is completely crazy. How did you find the training process and how long is it? So my training process was eight weeks. Yeah, that as well was quite daunting. You know what? It's actually quite scary before going to be cabin crew. That was like so tiring and yeah, very, very stressful. There were lots of assessments, lots of hands-on assessments, lots of practicals, lots of theories. If you don't pass, I think you get like one more chance or two more chances to pass, then you're off the course. It's like so ridiculous. Obviously, it's very key to be safe and when you're up in the air like we are literally the ones that people turn to to do medic stuff and you know all of that stuff but it's so much it's a lot it's a lot and i can't believe i even passed it to be honest with you i remember just revising like day in day out we'd go to like the hq to do some practical then i'd go back to the hotel that they put us in and then i'd just stay up all night revising then i'd have a test the next day sometimes you'd fail it fingers crossed not and then if you failed it you have to do it the next day after and then you'd have a couple days off which was the best days ever but then again you'd have to be revising it's like so much and i feel like people don't actually know that about cabin crew that the training process is literally so much and also yearly you have to go back to the headquarters to do this like three day i think it's called recurrent training so you have to go back and do that again which is also petrifying because you don't lose your job <laughs> honestly it's but at least you know you're all safe in the air but in the um airplane was it as good as you imagined so was it as good as i imagined i'm not really sure to be honest i think like at the start i had all these expectations and my first ever flight was las las vegas which was crazy i had no idea what i was doing it was honestly the most petrifying thing of my whole entire life they were like right so you're on door three and this is you know crack on and honestly no word of a lie i had to go to the manager and i was like i've literally just come out of training and she thought i'd already done a test fly and she was like oh you're all right you've done your test flight and i was like no this is my first flight like ever working ever and she was like oh my god like you'll need someone by your door to make sure you're doing it correctly it was just so daunting like even getting like the smallest things like getting the trolley out making sure it was like all done right i was like oh my god because although training's amazing you come out and you want to you come out and you don't really know what you're doing really until you're it's a very hands-on job so until you've flew a couple flights and you sort of get the gist of things you're a bit all up in the air you don't know what the hell's going on like maybe like like one like 10 minute lesson they told you how to do the trolley like from 
what a month ago like how am I supposed to remember that do you know what I mean so it's very hands-on and then you get into your everyone puts their trolley differently and like does it all differently and everyone you get in your own ways you know when I first started I had no idea what I was doing I was on a triple seven on the way to Las Vegas for 24 hours I'll get on to like different trips and lengths etc yeah that was very daunting but is it was it as glamorous no and yes I mean like sometimes I'd be up at like 3 a.m serving people and they would be so rude and people would be tired and I would be tired. I'd be back, I'd be in the back alley and I'd literally be falling asleep and I'd think, what the hell am I doing? And it, sometimes like, it was like 4 a.m. in England and I'm like serving people like alcohol or like just drinks in general. And like people, some people talk to you so badly and you think to yourself, this is not what I want to do. But then other times you're like lying on a beach catching a suntan and you're there for like three days and you're thinking, this is exactly what I want to do. So it's like very hot and cold yeah i wouldn't do it forever let's just say that is it daunting working with new people each week i feel like the whole job i don't i, I this is not the purpose of me sitting here and just putting off everyone on cap and crew but it is a very daunting job and you have to be quite confident so like you literally walk into the briefing room and you're with it depends what airplane obviously you're flying it could be just another two people or it could be another nine people or ten people depends on what airplane you're flying but for example las vegas i didn't know what the hell i was doing i walked into this briefing room full of like nine ten other people for a triple seven and it is daunting you don't know any of these people obviously that week I don't know what's going on now with British Airways because obviously coronavirus, I think they've changed and I think some people at Gatwick and Heathrow, which was never before. And I think it's all just a bit different. But when I was there, it was literally just Gatwick fleet. And so after a while, when you're there for even a few months, you get to know people and you get to like, you bump into people when you're going into the briefing room and you're like, oh yeah, I did a Barbados with her or I did it. And you get to know people, but obviously at the very start, you literally don't know anyone apart from the people on your um, training course, but you don't really see them very often or you don't really fly with them very often. Once in blue moon, you fly with them. They basically do this thing where they ask you quick fire questions around the table, like safety questions. So it'd be like, where do you keep this? What do you do with this? What, like, what would you do if someone was having a heart attack? What would you do? Can you name the this, that rule, this, that and the other, of all the stuff that you learned during your training? And if you get the question wrong, let me just say, you don't want to be the person getting the question wrong because it is absolutely petrifying. Like, I'm not being funny. Like, social anxiety to its absolute max. You walk into this room for the people you don't know. There's this cabin manager asking you a question. Like, it's so scary. And then obviously you haven't done your training sometimes in ages. I just came fresh out of training, so I knew the question. But even then, I've literally just come fresh out of training. I'm with all these random people that ask me this question. Imagine if I get it wrong. Like, that was literally just going through my head. Like, that would be so embarrassing. It's done out of a hierarchy. So in the briefing room, there's the cabin manager who's at the top. And then the person that's been there the longest out of everyone in the room. So I was at the bottom of the list most of the time. And it's done with what position. I don't know if they still do this anymore. Obviously the cabin manager would choose what position they'd want to be. Everyone's got a position by the doors and stuff. And it would be like in a hierarchy and we'd go down the list of who, what position people would be. So I would usually be left with the position that people don't want to be because I would always be the new the new girl basically yeah you'd get used to all the really bad positions to be honest with you but then the longer i was there you then see yourself like slowly moving up and that's why like i think the job is very addictive because it's very like hierarchy like the best feeling ever is i think even like at, at the end of the year even before i left i felt like sometimes i was like four or five up from the bottom. So there was all these newcomers underneath me and I felt a bit, little bit like, oh, I know what I'm doing. Like I've got all these positions that I can choose like before them. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I hated it when I first started, but then you do sort of start to like it the longer you be there. Cause you'd be like, oh my God, I get to choose to be this position. That's really hard to get sort of thing. Did you bid on the trips you did? Yes, I did. Whether I got them was a completely different story. With Gatwick at the time, it was called Beach Fleet. So we'd fly to like the Maldives, Barba loads of Caribbean, Barbados, Antigua, Bermuda, all those places that we would fly to the most amazing places 
ever, like places I would dream of. And whether I got them or not was a completely different story. I remember there was a 6 a.m. Mauritius I loved because it was a long one. Where else was there? I actually think there was a 5 day Maldives. Like, imagine getting that out. That would be amazing. I'd never actually got a 5 day. I, felt, I think I got the 4 day Maldives once and that was like amazing. I know New York was really, really popular. I bid for that over Christmas and I didn't get it. So I think that's also done in a hierarchy as well. It's, it's very much like the longer you've been there, the more perks and benefits that you get. But having said that, I was brand new and i did get really good trips as well um not all the time i avoided short haul because it was mixed um fleet from gatwick you couldn't just do long haul i avoided short haul and if i did get short haul on a on 3 a.m on a friday morning or a saturday or a sunday or any day of the week actually if it's 3 a.m i would take unpaid leave which is a completely different thing you can apply for unpaid leave and you don't need to do it but they just take it off your pay are the hours long Ex extremely long your legs would be hurting so much you're constantly stood up you can't even sit down i mean like you can sit down i guess during your break but yeah very very long hours especially if you're doing like 11 and a half hour flights to the maldives you've got to check in two hours before and then obviously you've got to do all the stuff after the fly and then you've got to walk to your coach and then by the time you get there you're like oh my god get me to bed but then obviously some of the crew just want to go out drinking so you're like oh my god what should i do i'm literally shattered but yeah extremely long hours um where was your favorite place to go away my favorite place was the maldives i went there once and i went with really nice crew they were really really lovely and yeah, it was just a really, really fun trip. It was actually one of my last trips. I think I did that in January and I actually had my last fly in March or April, I think, just before coronavirus. So yeah, it was one of my last ones. I absolutely loved it. How long do you stay at each destination? So it really, really depends. Obviously short haul is it's just a couple of hours and you don't leave the airplane unless you're going to duty free or something just go to the airport and it takes like 10 minutes and then sometimes you do a six day rushes but that isn't necessarily six days so you'd fly during the night but that counts as a day so then you'd get there then you'd have three nights maybe and then you'd fly that day but it's called a six day. It works out to be six days on the calendar, basically. It's, it's really confusing, but it works out to be six days on the calendar, even if you come back, even if you land the, in the morning and leave in the night, it's a six day, even though you're actually only there for three days, if that makes sense. But I know Heathrow did, was it a 10 day or a 12 day? I know people who probably fly for Heathrow right now are thinking, no, it's this, but, um, I'm acting really stupid right now. I don't know what it is. I think it was like a 10 day Singapore, Sydney. I know they did like much longer ones. Are you part of the Mile High Club? No, I'm not a member of the Mile High Club. I actually had a boyfriend the whole time I was cabin crew for BA. So, and also those toilets are absolutely disgusting. And yeah, I don't know anyone part of the Mile High Club either. I feel like this is a bit of like a, um, you know, people are like, oh, part of the Mile High Club. I literally don't know anyone part of the Mile High Club. No one I work for works with nothing. So I don't know if you guys know anyone part of the Mile High Club, but I reckon we would get in serious trouble and probably get fired as well. Did you get to meet any famous people? Yes, I did. So Usain Bolt in Kingston on the Kingston flight. I got to meet um, Danny Minogue on the way to Las Vegas. Nick Grimshaw and oh another DJ, I can't remember. I met the royal family of Kuwait. Because I remember there were celebrities and stuff in like the economy because the royal family took over the whole entire um, business class and there wasn't any first on that airplane. There wasn't any cabin for first. So they took over the whole business. So everyone else was pushed back. Yeah, maybe there was more. I actually can't think. But yes, you do see famous people all the time. And also in like obviously the airport and stuff. Did you have any scary experiences? Um, yes, I did. Coming back from Florida, I was literally having a trolley. I, I feel, I think Florida and like Tampa and stuff, um, Orlando and Tampa, sorry, rather than Florida, 
Um, those roots coming back from to London, they're very turbulent. Like, I don't know what it is with that root. Like, I remember I had to, like, lie down. I was so worried I was going to fall. Everyone was screaming. It was so scary. I was shaking afterwards. I thought I was going to die. A bit dramatic, but also not dramatic at the same time. So, if you're on that flight, you would understand. But, yeah, I think after time, you get really used to turbulence. And you sort of realise why it's there. And that you're not going to crash. And it's all going to be okay. But, yeah, it was quite scary at the time. Is it hard balancing work? work life and social life 100 million percent most weekends i wasn't at home you can't do anything about it um apart from obviously bid for no for weekends off but you don't know whether you're going to get that you could get unpaid leave but at the end of the day you need money so you can't just do that all the time and yeah sometimes i'd be flying back from god knows where long haul on a friday night during the whole entire night or the saturday and all my friends would be out and i would just be grinding away in an airplane thirty-five thousand feet up in the air but it's what it is and it what comes with the job and i was actually quite used to that actually i said that in my interview process because obviously i worked at a pub and you do like long hours in my pub you would do like i think there was even a shift that's 12 p.m to 12 a.m 12 hours so i was i was quite used to it having to work on the weekends as well i used to work on the weekends all the time in the pub so weekends really wasn't a problem for me yeah i could see a lot of people when you meet other crew members on your trips you would say oh do you have a boyfriend or how how do you feel like how is it like with your boyfriend in this job like it is it is hard but people do do it can you bring friends with you on trips yes you can you can put them on your staff travel you can have two people i think you change it like every six months or something and yes you can i don't know i I never did it just because it was like so much hassle and to be honest it looked really stressful when people would go um into the briefing room and they'd be like i'm bringing my friend or whatever she's trying to get on the flight and then oh there'd just be the whole thing of the friend trying to get on and it was just very very stressful but yes yes you can i remember actually this is a good little story so maybe like my third las vegas flight that i've ever done and i got into the briefing room and this lady was like so i'm bringing my fiance and we're going to get married in an elvis presley church and he's coming on as a Klingon on South Travel. And we were like, what? So we all went to this Elvis Presley um, wedding, which was literally insane. It was like a once in a lifetime thing. We got this like massive limo to take us to the church. It was so much fun. But um, that is a prime example of you can take your friends and you can also take your friends if you want and even get married. I think that happens quite a lot. You know, people take people on South Travel then they even like propose them. Because obviously you go to these amazing places, it seems like a no-brainer really. Was it difficult being away from family and friends? Yes, it was quite difficult. I missed quite a lot of things. But it was sort of just the nature of the job and there was nothing really I could do about it. Favourite thing and least favourite thing. So my favourite thing was obviously meeting amazing people and going on amazing trips and going to these amazing places I could only dream of going to. Just like so many funny memories like in Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. Like I see stuff on my memories now and I'm like oh my god that was so funny and so much fun so that was definitely my favorite thing ever i've got friends now that i've met who are literally amazing and we still are in contact to this day which is great and my least favorite thing was just how tired i was and how much jet lag i had it was awful i'd land at like 9 a.m maybe i'd have to drive on one hour two hours sleep and then i'd get into bed at maybe like 11 and then I'd just sleep and then I'd wake up in the afternoon. I wouldn't know what's going on. I wouldn't know where I am. You know, when you're so spaced out. And I feel like that happened like every single week. And it sort of took the fun out of it a little bit. And also like getting your rotors each week. And um, it's done on like a generated thing. But obviously you bid as well. Um, and you'd get like 3am Tenerife's. That was definitely the worst thing. <laughs> Ask anyone a long... Uh, a long short haul really early in the morning on a weekend i'm sorry not for me would you ever go back you know what probably not don't get me wrong when i got made redundant i was really upset i thought i was going to keep my job and the email came as a surprise to me but i probably wouldn't go back it's an amazing job and amazing people went to amazing places and it really is 
amazing to do for anyone really even if you just have a year that you want to just explore and like meet great people then definitely do it but for me it's not how it was before it, it's not how it was when my mum flew that was quite apparent when I was flying as well but yeah probably not go back but I'm glad I did it so that is the answer to that question and last but not least what is the salary like god you guys you are no z but you know what you don't even need to be no z i can literally just type it up for you now british airways salary is eighteen thousand two hundred and ninety four divided by 12 so that works out to be one thousand four 524 pounds i can say i was actually earning more than that i don't know where these people have got that from yeah it to be honest i can see maybe they're saying that's your basic i'm not sure it's it's a little bit higher than that i mean it's not like extreme but it really depends on like where how many trips you've done if you've done long haul that is why long haul trips as well and longer trips were harder to get because obviously you get more money for it because it's like a ticking hourly thing so you sign in so you get your basic and then on top of that sometimes it would double just from hours that i've worked on trips and stuff so you'd be pet you'd be getting paid when you're sleeping basically so if you've got a six day trip that'd be amazing for allowances i think you'd get like maybe like 400 pounds extra and obviously if you're doing a few of those a month it's over double your basic so it really depends but some people prefer short haul because they like going back to their family but yeah it's, it's hard to say what exactly the salary is mine really really ranged and I also spent a lot of my allowances it's quite confusing they basically give you allowances and you can spend that away or you can and it it will get deducted from your monthly pay and i also spend my allowances especially when i was in florida like going shopping and stuff but yeah i can't really give you a set amount but obviously when you type it up it says one, over 1500 a month i would say it's wrong i'd say for me that'd be a rubbish rubbish month that would be like a lot of unpaid leave but obviously you know if you're a csm if you're a, a cabin service manager you'd obviously get paid way more because you're a manager i hope you guys all enjoyed this little q and a it was a little bit random but i do get a lot of questions about cabin crew and just yeah working for bia etc um so yeah it is an amazing job and if you guys do want to apply i do think british airways are applying at the moment i've seen somewhere for 2022 so yeah definitely check them out on the website and yeah i've got lots of pictures etc on my instagram of when i used to fly if you scroll a bit down yeah i had some amazing trips i met some amazing people and i would definitely recommend so yeah i hope you guys all loved and make sure to like this video if you liked watching me and make sure to subscribe and turn on your push notifications make sure to also follow my instagram if you guys want to ask me questions for q a's because i do put the odd story up asking what you guys would like to know and what questions you'd like to ask on certain topics so see you guys in the next video see you later